computer. Yeah, yeah that's okay. I've started the recording. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the kickoff meeting for the, and I got to make sure I read the name correctly because it's a long <laughs> uh, the package vulnerability management and reporting collaboration space. Um, so we, we opted for accuracy uh, in our title at the cost of length. Um, but yeah, so uh, we have an agenda here. I'll link um, it in the chat, but it is issue number two on the, the repo, um, which we will go off of. There's the link. Um, I will be taking some rough notes uh, in the that I'll post back into the issue. We don't have a, a doc generated um, since this is not part of the, the bot setup that um, folks normally use, but we'll make sure some notes get posted um, after. And uh, I think I'm gonna take a page out of Darcy's playbook from the NPM meetings. Uh, do you wanna make, oh, you made one, Darcy. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I can copy and paste it, yeah. So feel free to add yourself as attendees in there. And I've, I've copied and pasted the agenda you created, Wes, in, into that doc. Cool. And the, the page I was going to pull from your playbook on the NPM meetings is reminding everybody that we have a, a, a this is part of the OpenJS Foundation. Uh, so we have some community guidelines that everybody should follow in any communications um, in the group and just make sure to be respectful, folks. So um, thanks for joining yeah. us. And uh, yeah, let's thing worth, just oh, one other thing oh. to worth mentioning is if you actually turn off your camera and block it, that's better than not having it on at all because it will then show you as speaking versus if you don't have your camera on, you sort of are a mysterious voice. So that's just one other thing to keep in mind. Cool, so, um, so to get started, the first thing we just wanna do is make sure everybody knows who everybody is. And I think maybe everybody already does, but it's worth doing for the recording. So, um, so I'll start. Uh, my name is Wes Todd. Uh, I work at Netflix on our Node.js platform team. Also have participated in the Node.js project at a bunch of different levels, mostly through our assortment of working groups. Um, and I'm interested particularly uh, in what we're working on here. I, and that's something I'd like everybody else to say is like why, they're, why they wanna participate in this group. Um, so, so my personal interest is, I, I think there's a big gap between uh, the experience of open source maintainers, communities consuming uh, open source projects and the security ecosystem and, and how the reporting does. And I think there's just a really big opportunity for us to, to get people together and, and sort of come up with better solutions for, for the future. So that's me. Uh, I'll hand it off to Darcy as the other co. Thanks, Wes. Um, so yeah, my name is Darcy Clark. I work at uh, GitHub as the engineering manager for the NPM client team and, and support all of our open source tooling uh, from NPM. Uh, and yeah, the reason I got involved in, with this sort of uh, space, this group um, was hopefully to, uh, you know, help improve the tooling and the ecosystem around uh, vulnerability reports and, and sort of I had heard from many folks on this call and as well as the community that, you know, that we could do better um, and hoping that we can start some really, um, you know, helpful conversation in the space. So, um, and help to uh, give uh, consumers uh, as well as uh, maintainers, um, you know, uh, more mechanisms to, to reduce noise and, and ensure that, um, uh, that we're being safe, like moving forward. And um, yeah, very excited about what we can do here uh, and excited about who we can essentially collaborate with uh, in terms of organizations and individuals. So yeah, that's my, my interest. And I guess, should I just start choosing folks? I, I guess everybody can uh, choose the next person in line. Um, I'd love to go with uh, uh, Jordan, if you can. Sure. Um, I'm Jordan. I, let's see, uh, I maintain a bunch of packages. I'm on TC39. I do a lot of participation in JS, OpenJS Foundation spaces and in Node. Um, and I maintain NBM and uh, I have a lot of uh, thoughts and use cases about packages and want to help the ecosystem. And who are you choosing to go next, Jordan? <laughs> oh, yes, thank you. Um, let's go with Dominicus. 
I'm Dan. I build things for clients at Neofarm. Uh, the client that I'm working with right now, I frequently end up being the person who gets to respond to various fails and alerts uh, when various scanning tools tell me their security problems. Uh, so yeah, I have a direct interest in reducing that workload for myself. Um, but also uh, as, as I do get to respond to these, I get exposed to what's actually happening in, in the actual packages that do have these vulnerabilities. And I think that there's a uh, scope to improve things for both maintainers and people who get to basically uh, maybe be a bit less involved in, in, in the actual ecosystem uh, and, and just have to deal with all of these alerts. So, yeah. Uh, Michael, you want to go? Hi, I'm Michael Dawson. I work for Red Hat. And I'm, I'm interested in this one. It, the, the original issue was open. It was like, yeah, I, I really feel that pain because we've had some, you know, uh, projects that have had to do, say, a release of their, their um, product or module because of vulnerabilities that were reported that didn't actually apply, but they really had no other choice. And in one case, they actually had to make like a Sember major change, which would like cut off users. So it was very awkward. Uh, also at, at Red Hat, I'm in the team that gets the reports from our customers saying, hey, we scanned our, our containers and here's all the reports. And so we actually spend quite a lot of time mapping back and explaining the, well, yes, okay, that's in this sub dependency and then it's fixed, not fixed. And, and a lot of times they just don't apply. So that's work that really doesn't add any value. And so very interested in making it so that not just for our, our own use, but everybody I'm sure is running into that where it'd be nice to focus your work on the things that matter versus the noise as, as somebody else mentioned. And um, I will, uh, how about Robin, why don't you go next? Sure, I'm Robin Ginn, um, Executive Director of the OpenJS Foundation. And I'm here to make sure or help you all be successful. Uh, we look at a collaboration space much like we would a project, whether it's Node or um, NVM or anyone else. Um, so think of us as your business, marketing, events, legal, infrastructure, whatever you need. Uh, we're sort of that, we're your team to make it happen. Um, and just, I would just add, I think this is a really um, important space and um, something that we get asked about quite often, just generally. So anything I can do to sort of help scale your efforts, bring in more participants, I'm happy to be part of that team. Cool. Oh, I got to pick someone. Um, okay, because I'm going to try to, you're going to have to help me pronounce names. <laughs> right. <laughs> Z-man. <laughs> ZB. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Every English speaker just calls me ZB. So the first two letters are fine. Yeah. And how, how would you, uh, how would, yeah, you, how would you actually it? say it? I, I kind of skipped you uh, because so, I didn't okay. want to take that chance. <laughs> so I'm Zbigniew Tenerovic uh, and my, my name also has different forms. Uh, so friends call me Zbyszek and everyone at work calls me ZB because that's easier. And uh, I represent prior art. So I made NPM audit resolver. Uh, which is a wrapper to NPM audit uh, that uh, helps you set up a separate file where you can make decisions about specific vulnerabilities if you want to ignore them and for how long and why. That's about it. And I'm invested in this because I want to develop it further. I want to, uh, well, the, the whole thing started uh, by me asking around, hey, how about we merge this into NPM itself? And uh, that escalated to this. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks for opening that for sure. You're the reason this exists. <laughs> and I think uh, the last person on the call is Tim. Is that Tim Brennan? Yeah. In a while. I picked Tim. Uh, we don't hear you. Oh, I think you might be muted. How about now? Can you hear me? Yep. Cool. Uh, so I'm basically a fly on the wall here. Wes had posted a link to this chat. And since I've worked on Netflix's streaming technology, and now I'm working on the website uh, foundation. So I figured 
packages are probably pretty important. Security is pretty important. I'm, I know Wes handles quite a bit internally, but I don't know if he gets as in the weeds as I do with some of these internals at Netflix. So uh, fly on the wall. If I have anything to add, uh, I will, but otherwise I'll probably be pretty quiet. <laughs> Well, I think that's everybody, right? So um, thanks, welcome. Uh, you know, as, as the kickoff meeting, um, you know, I think we've, we've got a pretty good group. I, I am uh, really hoping that we can engage some more folks on the security side. So Laurent uh, had to, uh, was unable to make it. And then I think um, Marcin was, am I saying his name correctly as well? Was also unable to make it from a last minute um, conflict, but uh, there are also hopefully folks we can we can get involved in the long run because um, I think they represent some pretty important constituencies. Uh, the you know SNCC and then the Node Project Security. Um, what's the name of that that group? The is it the Security Working Group that Marcin is is the lead of? So. Um, so hopefully in the future we can get get them on board. Um, okay. Let's see, next on the agenda. So basically uh, I, I wanna maybe, and actually maybe Robin, I could tap you or maybe Michael for this. Uh, could you maybe give a quick uh, synopsis of, of what a collaboration space is and, and why we're coming in this format as opposed to you know the few others we, we could have chosen? Sure, I, I can do that. Uh, collaboration spaces are meant to be, um, you know, provide a place for groups to get together and collaborate on things that are important to the JavaScript ecosystem, but which aren't projects. So, you know, from the beginning of the, 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 the various foundations, actually, and as we brought the foundation together into the OpenJS Foundation, we always had like a good process for, you know, onboarding projects and, you know, figuring out which projects fit and, and so forth. But the collaboration space was a, a more recent extension to say, but not everything that, that, that we wanna support in the foundation is a project. So as, as Robin mentioned at the beginning, this is a way we can support um, groups coming together. And, and we have other forms like teams and working groups um, that have been used in the projects and, and in the OpenJS Foundation, but often those are more of a subset of the people who are already working in the project or already working, say, in the in the cross project council. So it's kind of like people who already know what's going on. They know how, who all the people are, and, and what resources they have. And and so the the collaboration space is is more for. We want to bring people who who may not necessarily be regular contributors to a project to the cross project council, and give them a space where they can get together and talk about something like this, which is important to the ecosystem but it doesn't necessarily, you know, it's not gonna result in pull requests to a particular project or governance at the CPC. Um, but hopefully we have some outputs, um, you know, it could be documentation, it could be like agreed sort of specifications, but some sort of work products that are then useful to the, the greater, the greater um, ecosystem. You know, in, in, in a business, it's easy to get, you know, uh, mailing lists and Zoom accounts and Slack accounts. and but as a sort of open source group of people getting together, that's a bit harder. And, and like Robin said, that's what the foundation is here to support by providing those things, help us amplify the message through marketing. And, and if we have legal questions, provide support like that. So hopefully I didn't take too much time, but like a collaboration space is meant to provide a vehicle for people like ourselves to come together and work together on, a, on a, an issue that's important to the foundation and the ecosystem. Yeah, and I think many people are familiar with SIGs, the special interest groups that maybe some of the other Linux Foundation groups. I think it's it's a little similar in that regard. Um, so, but yeah, yeah, it's 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 it's. I think that's the best analog. But when I I, lo I did look at like um, the CNCF SIGs, and I thought uh, we're not. I don't qu didn't quite want to just say it was the same thing because I think it's in my mind anyway. It's 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 hopefully. Like SIGs are again, are almost like, hey, so here's a, a group of people, a subset of the people, whereas for mm -hmm. open collaboration spaces, I'm really hoping we can bring in people who haven't even been involved at all in the past. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah. 
Excellent. So yeah, so that's sort of why we're structuring in this way. So let's talk a little bit more about like what this specific group is hoping to see as as outcomes. So, um, you know, if you if you look in the readme, we've got sort of this write up that we did in sort of a, it wasn't really a closed call, but it was, I think, only a few folks. Um, and, and basically what we call out is that there's there's a lot of work being done in the ecosystem around reporting, uh, the tooling, the remediation uh, of security incidents. Um, and so this spans tons of different, uh, you know, service providers, like, we, you know, we talk about Sneak, uh, thinking about, you know, GitHub and NPM in this regard as a service provider through like NPM audit. Um, and then there's, you know, folks uh, like ZB who manage projects in the space. Um, and, and we found, uh, especially, and I think maybe this is be a great place for Darcy to, um, to give some added color here. It's like, it's not always clear what the right place is for folks to take those issues. Um, so maybe Darcy, if you want to talk a little bit about some of our experience there. Yeah. So this has been something I've been trying to navigate over the last couple of years where the right places to have the conversation, whether or not people bring ideas on what we should do. Um, in MPM specifically and, and how to improve our own tooling versus jumping into what I thought was potentially the right form with like a package maintenance working group um, in the node project. Um, and then it seemed like this was even more broad, broader than just the, the node project specifically, um, which is why this uh, this conversation has eventually led to, um, I think the, the, the scope being widened to, to the OpenJS Foundation, which I, I think because you know, the scope there is, is the entire JavaScript ecosystem. I think it's the right, this is the right place to, to be having this discussion. Um, and then if what springs up are out of these conversations is tooling that eventually MPM implements, uh, at least we've hopefully gotten broader consensus with um, researchers and people that are providing um, the existing tools or providing the existing um, uh, being the existing registries of record for that information, um, whether that is the the NPM advisory DB, GEB advisory DB, the SNCC advisory DB, or any of the other you know advisory DBs, um, you know, it, it, getting them involved and and hopefully um, uh, exciting, getting some exciting you know exploration in this space. Um, uh, I think makes sense, and I think it's the right place to to be having the conversation. So that's why I've pushed all, as well. Uh, and I think that's what you're leading to, Wes, to, to have this conversation here. Um, and you know, there's some great ideas, like CB's uh, idea specifically uh, around, um, you know, uh, implementing some sort of uh, mechanism for for being able to filter out and and giving a tool for maintainers makes a lot of sense. Um, but if we did it only within the scope of, let's say, NPM, the impact would be limited to the, the folks using our one tool, that one tool. So if we can, uh, you know, collaborate with people, uh, you know, and other tooling author, authors or other security researchers and, and come up with something that we all agree is kind of like a, a good way forward, I think that that's the best outcome. And that's sort of what we're, that would be success, I think, for, for this group. Um, and, and then we've sort of written that out in, in the, High level readme there that we have is is um, you know uh, I think success criteria for this this group is just getting more alignment um, and, and trying to uh, you know, uh, ensure that we are more safe uh, a year from now than we are today and and that people are are no longer you know uh, the the problems that we're seeing in terms of noise and or or what we might think as spam or or you know. Etc. Is, is being reduced and, and people really still consider the ecosystem to be a lot safer than it was like you know, today, uh, tomorrow. So, I just wanted to add the one thing I, I, I've come to realize as we've been thinking and, and writing this down and documenting it that it's actually even broader than I originally thought. Like, you know, I was thinking, you know, we think of MPM audit, we think of SNCC, but actually a lot of reports I see coming in now are through, through container scanners, which may not even use MPM or SNCC. And so that we need to, we need to try and pull some of the people from those and you know those uh, projects into this effort as well because we'll want all of the scanners to sort of hopefully consume the same data and you know address the the issue in the same way. So it's actually you know just supporting what Darcy said. 
it's it's quite a big scope of people that we want to pull into the discussion. It's not node specific. It may not even be JavaScript specific in some of those tools. And and so we'll see. I mean, I think we should focus on the JavaScript side. So let's not make it too big, but I'm just raising that it is a bigger scope than any one project for sure. Yeah, and I'll just be mindful there because I know that there is the open source uh, security foundation. So that's actually Mar Marcin or Martian uh, Hope, I think is a part of that group. And that group does, I think, tackle the wider, okay. you, know, uh, you know, that that higher level. So I, I do think even in our original proposal that we were trying to at least scope what we're, we're speaking to within the JavaScript and, and the community. Yeah. So um, yeah, there definitely is. And I think we did mention that as well in, in that proposal that, um, you know, things that we find work for our ecosystem could essentially be leveraged, hopefully, by other folks that, you know, there might be tooling that we create standards that we have for, for the Node and, and JavaScript ecosystems that make sense for us, um, that also then makes sense for other communities. But um, I, I want to make sure that we, that's, if we're going to put in some sort of, like, um, boundary or, yep. or some sort of like let's let's you know try to stay with always within our, our ecosystem so that we're not trying to tackle too big of a problem sure. and, and can, don't expand the constituents past what i think is, is probably reasonable um, i agreed agreed let's not take on more it much be be much better to solve our part of the problem than fail at the whole thing yeah i, th I think that i think what what the real probably heart of this issue is, is that we just need to make sure that we align with the greater ecosystem, you know, of, of software security, you know, handling. So if we, if we don't want to come up with something that is totally counter to what every other ecosystem is doing, and, and then have to like ask all these security researchers to adapt to, to our method, like we just want to make sure that it, that we play nicely Right, like the goal is that the whole goal mm -hmm. of this is that we all play nicely together, right? Yeah. Um, and 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 so that should definitely be top of mind as we as we solution uh, moving forward. I don't want to. I kind of want to keep us rolling here, so I'm, let's let's move on. Unless anybody has anything final comments on that. Uh, well, top I, I just wanted to add that the for various reasons the incentives of the entire security industry have caused this issue, and we certainly can't proscribe anything for out anything. You know, we can't even suggest anything outside the NPM ecosystem, really. But um, if we can come up with a way to solve the problem, then we might actually demonstrate the the importance of solving it to the wider security industry. And they may then shift their incentives so that they're not, you know, finding one use case out of 10,000 saying, therefore, all 10,000 get a CVE filed on them. I'll just one last very short thing is. Everybody I've talked to sort of outside agrees that we kind of have the worst case in the JavaScript ecosystem with the deep trees. And so actually we're probably a, a good group to figure out what makes sense because we're most affected by it. Yeah, excellent points, uh, completely agree. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, so we've got a couple of fairly pressing like time sensitive things that we, we wanna um, work on in this, this meeting. So. Uh, that's basically the last two, well, really the next the next item. Um, so we've got the OpenJS world uh, coming up. We need to prepare. So I, I posted a link to, or I didn't post a link, rather. I, I posted the contents of the email talking about the recorded session that we need to produce for that. Uh, we need to do that pretty quickly. Um, and then also we want to sign up for the Q&A session there. Um, I imagine, you know, everybody, it should probably just be a panel, like an open panel that we do uh, so that we're all there and we can, you know, field the, the folks' questions as a group. Um, does, that, is that, does everybody kind of agree on that? Yeah, I see nods. Okay, cool. We, do we so, have so, any, is there any concerns about that, Robin? Like, can we have as many people show up as we want? Okay. Good. Oh, that's fantastic. Yep. Yeah, good question. <laughs> I sort of just opted in for that, but that wasn't really, I should have asked. Good, thank you. Um, okay, so there's a schedule for that. Um, what we'll maybe take away for that part, since it's real quick, we can just wrap it up, is I can post the options that we have available, and then we can just do another similar quick vote on what will work for folks. Um, and I think since it's pretty loose, you know, if if we can't get everybody, um, you know, and people can probably come and go as long as there's, you know, 
four or five of us there to answer people's questions. Uh, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's asynchronous, right? So it's like over Slack. It's not, we don't need to be live on, on video. Correct. Yeah, it's Slack. Um, and if you all want to, uh, if you have friends in different time zones that are interested, then perhaps, you know, you can pass it off to folks who live in different time zones. You don't all need to be covering all the time. That is a great point too. So yeah, maybe we could maybe we could schedule one time that's particularly good for you know North America and one time that's particularly good for for Europe. Do we have? I don't I don't see anybody on the call who I know is in Asia. Um, do we have? Or maybe, Australia. Australia. So maybe we try to shoot for three times. Would maybe be good. So I'll take I'll take that takeaway as to open an issue to to schedule that, and I'll, I'll ping everybody from the call on that. Cool. Okay. So then uh, the main topic is just let's, what do we want to do for the, for the session? Um, what topics do we want to cover? Do we have particular, particular goals? I think, um, did I post in here? I think it's a 30 minute. Let me see if I posted that. Part. Yeah, I think it's the goals would be good. Or a 10 minute lightning talk. These are the options that you posted. It'd probably be good to set the goals because that'll kind of figure out what do we want to accomplish through this. Is it recruiting new members? Is it uh, you know awareness? What's kind of the the main purpose? I think since this is really the kickoff, um, I think it's really awareness and recruiting folks. Um, we we could you know get into the presentation of some of the prior art stuff. I don't know you know. If, if ZB is interested in that, but, but I'm worried that if we go too deep too soon. So, so because the scope of this is to bring it together as a discussion, I think if we jump into solutioning, we might, you know, put off folks or, or maybe just set the tone that is maybe not what we really want, which is we want folks of all different ideas and backgrounds around this topic to come together. Um, so, yeah, that, that would be, that would sort of push on the, setting the con you know explaining the problem and making the awareness that we're working on it to, and then to getting people as opposed to getting to solutions because i think you're right as soon as we sort of get into a solution for one 30 minutes isn't a huge amount so we wouldn't be able to get into detail and we're not really at the point where we've spent much time you know discussing that we have some of the prior art but it would be good to have us it's not we don't have proposals even to, to present and like hey we've thought about this and we want more feedback on them yet So with that in mind, I, I think we would probably want to do a sort of similar format to what we just did with the intros, which would be like, talk about the collaboration space just a little bit, talk about our proposal for, you know, the, for what we're doing as a collaboration space. Um, and then one thing I was thinking would be probably pretty valuable is to spend a, a fair chunk of time on the problem statement. So I think, um, you know, doing things like putting, you know, I think, and it didn't land in the, um, the readme, but originally on our discussion, we had like a bunch of example links of folks having issues in this, right? Like, I remember there was one that was like a handlebars. I saw you unmute, Darcy, do you wanna go ahead? Yeah, I was just gonna say, we, um, when Michael and myself actually uh, spun up the repo, I think we intentionally redacted that section from the proposal. Um, we want to be mindful that we weren't trying to uh, shame anybody and and uh, and utilize any specific example. Like uh, more broadly, you know, we're I think everybody's aware of some some issues, and um, so that's like that was one sort of mindful thing that I think we did there when we were saying that. So I just want to to essentially jump in just to to make sure that we're. Uh, that there's a reason why that got redacted. Um, so uh, if you, I, I can definitely share with folks if uh, they're missing. I think most people on this call actually had access to the uh, original email that we sent out for, for the proposal. So you, the examples are there. Um, but, I, but I think, yeah, I think in terms of like the agenda that we're creating here, and, and I apologize, I'm, I'm trying to take notes to, to <laughs> lock us into a schedule for that, um, that time. Um, I think it'd be good to go over, you know, what action items look like in terms of um, uh, maybe pulling together um, the state of the 
the current ecosystem, right? So um, it might be finding net new examples of tools. Um, we don't have to necessarily define examples of like issues maybe, I don't know. Like I'm just very aware. I don't want to like call folks out for, uh, I, I feel like- we'll, there, yeah, There's we'll one uh, antagonist we can use uh, without shaming anyone in particular. And this is regular expression denial of service, which everyone loves. Uh, so I think uh, if we wanted to uh, have our uh, our presentation be a bit less dry uh, and theoretical, we can like show a case where you have a CI job that runs npm audit and then uh, talk about uh, a redos vulnerability showing up uh, every day in something somewhere in your dependencies, and that's uh, that's relatable and that's not shaming anyone in particular. And those are ones that are like false positives. Is that just, yeah. Okay. I mean, that, that's a, that's that kind of like, that's what I was thinking. Can we take the ones we have and like, that's a good example. The other one we could look at is like, you know, I, the, the example I was talking about in, in abstract is like having to do a release of your, of your library because of security vulnerabilities. And there's no other way to you know, basically say, no, it doesn't apply to me. Like you've looked at it, you've done all the due diligence, but there's just no other way to, to signal that information, right? So maybe go through like the, the problems that, that the maintainers are struggling with and, and the consumers too, right? Like the consumers are like, this tool tells me there's, there's, there's something I got to fix. I actually don't understand. Like I can see the consumers a lot of time, the person who's responsible doesn't understand the modules. They can't look at the JavaScript. They either want it fixed and somebody telling them it doesn't really apply doesn't solve their problem because they've got to somehow explain that then to their to their reports like well why doesn't it and and so forth right i have to say thinking about this a really compelling story that we could we could tell would include some like testimonials from folks in the ecosystem it's a it's a bit of a short notice but i would definitely volunteer to reach out to a few folks who i know have expressed you know um either opinions or just experience in those kind of issues. I, I imagine at least a few folks would be willing to hop on a quick video chat and let me record and just have them, you know, talk about their experience. We could probably just even, we could probably even fill like almost five minutes with just like a couple of different folks on different levels of this explaining their, you know, sort of doing a testimonial style. Does how well does it work if we if like you have that recorded and you play the video over a Zoom call? Does that? Well, well, so but the the whole thing is recorded, right? right. So, so I we, guess we could stitch it in. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like. Yeah. No, because I think that would be very effective. Like that's. Yeah, and after your session, we often you know we call these these breakout sessions, the gifts that keep on giving, we'll turn it into a blog and we can even, you know, use pieces of it, use it for social, all kinds of things, but that would be really valuable, especially in a sort shorter chunk like that. Yeah. Cause obviously I think, you know, people are, uh, they're going to hear us talking about it and you know we, we can lay out the the details but the more voices we have you know i think really illustrates the impact in the community that that this problem creates you know i, I think right I think the structure i would i would see would be having a, you know a couple of package maintainers um you know i'll, I'll i don't want to volunteer anybody on the call that's being recorded but i'll reach out i have a few people in mind who i know have been like Hey, there's this issue. It's you know it doesn't apply, and and has had to like raise a bit of a a, a storm to get you know those things fixed. Um, and, and you know just hearing from those folks if they're willing to you know to speak about it, I think would just be a lot better than us. You know even on this call, it you know I hear like, Michael what you described is great, but imagine if they heard you know that from right yeah so like from, in that you know module popular module X right. If I'm gonna yeah if you're gonna reach out, I can send you the name of the person who was the story who had to do the release and we can see if they'd be willing to yeah because it'd be much better if they're willing to talk about it publicly right this can be a team effort too i i don't think like you know we don't it doesn't need to all be coming through like darcy or i as the champions of this like if if everybody on the call has any ideas and wants to reach out to somebody you know we can we can put together a sort of collaborative 
of effort here. I also know a few folks at Netflix who have been on the very far end. Like Michael, you described the people who are like, I don't actually know what the right thing is. I right. think if we can get a couple of those folks who are just like, you know, application engineers and and it can just say like, look, I, I got an, I remember one story that I, you know, had somebody report to me was like, here's a screenshot of my NPM audit and it's 48,000 vulnerabilities. And it's like, what are they going to do with that? Like that kind of story is, I, I think, what we want. Getting it from the people who right, yeah. are living it will be a lot more, you know, a lot better, I think. Yeah. Okay. And I think maybe the story of how uh, how I needed to build NPM audit resolver might fit uh, this part as well. So this would be like the, uh, the consumer uh, perspective. Because uh, I had to build it because we had like uh, 20 something repositories with a separate uh, audit CI job for each and it was it was becoming hard. So I, I think that fits yeah, that, into yeah. the story more than into like next steps or actions because uh, again, we don't want to uh, come up with uh, proposed solutions uh, uh, at this point. So let's talk about it not as a solution, but as a uh, as an example of what happened. I think that's a great point. Yeah. So maybe um, maybe do you see do you see it like if we did this sort of testimonial section? Would you be would you want to do a recording of yourself talking about it for like a yeah. couple of minutes, or would you rather just like have a yeah yeah that's that's what point? I'm that's what I'm saying. Uh, so. Uh, I don't know which format would work better because uh, you know if I'm in the group here, so it's it doesn't have to be a testimonial, but uh, if it fits uh, uh, consistency better, uh, it could look uh, like a testimonial as well. So uh, we can do we can do either. I'm I'm like I'm I'm really liking that format, thinking that like you know we can kind of have like at the beginning a shortish introduction to like, here's what we're doing. Here's why we think we think it's important. But then even if like there was 20 minutes of, and here, let, but, but let's listen to the people who are, who are having, you know, feeling the pain. And if we could get 20 minutes, that would be like fantastic. And then at the end, it could be a bit of a closeout, which is the mostly a call to end. So, hey, if, if you're interested in this and you, you can identify with any of these people, Hey, come and join us, and and let's see what we how how we can fix this, right? Yeah, I think that's a good format. Uh, Twenty minutes. Might, right, that's a challenge, yeah, right? I don't know if we can get that many people in the next week who can give us enough content to snip right. together in twenty minutes. Then absolutely, I I have to say, fit the other option was ten minutes, and that. I can't imagine us fitting into that short of a time, right? Or or, or yeah. break it up. You know, it's almost like when you watch a presentation you speak for five or ten minutes and you have two minutes with the customer and then right right it's it's like that so smaller you know smaller chunks yeah we could add some commentary you know it could be like you know Wes and Darcy could be like hey we're introducing here's a few other people then you could we could play a few and then it could be like so you could have some commentary on well that's one kind of user but here's another kind of user right and then so I guess I was mostly going with like as much of that as we can get so we can see what we can get and then fill in the rest of the time around it with the. Uh... Yeah, that makes perfect sense to me. Um, I think yeah, it depends on how many folks are willing to do a quick you right. know, video interview. Yeah. Uh, also, this is a VOD, uh, not an actual conference with a schedule we need to fill. So uh, I wouldn't focus too much on this being exactly 30 minutes uh, in, in my experience with VOD conferences, uh, they they tend not to care if you go like 10 minutes either way, it's, it's still fine. That's right. We'll see if Robin agrees with that. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Absolutely. She'll tell us if we're wrong on that. No, I mean, security's in such high demand for content. Absolutely. Totally fine. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Um, so, so then the takeaway from that is uh, let's reach out to folks who we know. So we do, I think it will come better if we reach out to the folks that we know and we've dealt with on the right. issue. 
um, than if like, for example, we just cold email some of those folks from me or Darcy. Um, Maybe if so we put together a doc where we can all put in who we think we could contact. Like, is I'm, that an issue? Or no, I, I'm, I'm just thinking about, you know, people who don't want to, I don't want to put people on the spot. Um, sure, okay. Yeah, you don't want to identify them until they've said yes. Is the... Right, right. So maybe my thinking is, could if we reach out to folks who we know who might be interested in, in doing this, and if they say yes, uh, we can come back in. The Slack is probably the starter place, and then we can put together a list um, and, and do some, right? We did, we did create a channel, right? Or did we decide we were doing it all in the GitHub? We decided we were doing it in the GitHub, didn't we? The only thing I would advise um, if it, you know, Wes and Darcy are fine for a session. If you fill it out with a lot of people and they're all men, it will not be accepted. So. Well, that, yeah, that's why I was asking earlier, right? Like, do we have a... Uh... We have, yeah, kind of a rule. If it's, if it, you know, it, then it kind of turns into a panel and we don't have all male panels, so. That is an ex excellent point. Um, I so I will reach out specifically to uh, non-male identifying folks that I know in the ecosystem as well. Make sure that you know, uh, Perfect. if you reach out to folks, uh, you know, keep keep that in mind. That's great. And does great does that include, like, I could you know, if we kept the the people who were actually delivering the talk to say Darcy and Wes. But then they were playing videos of people. Is that any different? That's what I'm just trying to understand too. Like, do we have to count all the people relating their experience or? No, I just, um, Darcy and Wes are fine. But again, even if it's not a panel and you, all of your voices are men, it would not land well. Agreed. Mm -hmm. So I think from that from that perspective, though, it does say, like, I don't think we should have intros for all of the team then, right? Like, it should be a Darcy and Wes as a, hey, here's this thing that's launching, we're talking to you versus the, because that, that will at least not make it as extreme in that sense, right? Yeah. And then what we would like to do as soon as possible is get Darcy and Wes up on our schedule, because people are registering now, we've published our schedule. Um, and then we'll start promoting some sessions as well. We're, we're promoting keynotes now, but other special ones will we'll do that. Um, I think, for my, at least for myself, I believe I filled out all my information, but definitely uh, poke my, myself in well. May? Okay, you may be on it already, because Shannon, okay. if you sent it to Shannon and she was on the mail, um, I'll check while we're talking. Okay, if you can just follow up with myself and Wes to make yeah, sure that we're all yeah. set up. To make sure we're good to go there, then uh, pretty sure I'm not. So I'll I'll take yeah. that right after this call. <laughs> okay. And and that kind of supports like ZB being a in a, you know one of the stories versus part of the talk, right? If you know what I mean. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so we we've got 15 minutes or 12 minutes left. Uh, so I think. After, like now that we have that sort of plan for, for what the session will be, actually, before I move on, does anybody have anything they want to say on that? Do folks like the direction of that idea? And is everybody sort of thumbs up? Uh, I do one more suggestion. Does, does it make any sense for Robin to, to participate and sort of intro pitch at the very beginning, pitch the uh, collaboration spaces? This no, is our I, first collaboration space, no? No, I think it's, uh, I think it's fine. Uh, have the community drive it. Um, Wes, you are on the sketch with Darcy with your picture. She's probably oh, stolen probably from the story. interwebs, perhaps. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> Just take a look if there's any edits and then um, Shannon and I can uh, fix you up. Um, the other issue was timing. So Rachel uh, Romoff, our marketing comms lead, had drafted a blog. Darcy, I know you've seen it. Wes, I, I, I don't know if everyone else on the team, it's basically, it pulled some of the information from when you all submitted your proposal. Um, we could probably add a little color. We could get that out earlier. Like we could, so if you wanna announce a collab space, you could do it at the event or you could do it a, a week before 
um, with a blog and just and try to drive more um, eyeballs to your session as well. So you might want to think about that um, and talk with Rachel and just feel like how you um, how comfortable are you with uh, time? I'm comfortable with that. Uh, we do have, you know, we'll have to schedule pretty aggressively these these interviews to make sure that we have time to, to stitch it all together. Um, does anybody else have any opinions? Would, would we be able to, like folks on the call could maybe do some proofreading and stuff. And if we had that, if it was a group effort, I think, you know, we could probably have something together. And we quick. could just go with a blog, right? And, and then save the video, but use it as a driver for your session to get it out early. Yeah, like I think the blog post is a, hey, and you can come learn more at the mm -hmm. session. And then you could actually maybe turn that into if you want video content afterwards. Yeah, so I can circle back and, and unless I can TC you, uh, I was working with Rachel and Jory at the time to, to review that, that blog post originally. So um, yeah, we can potentially get that out here uh, soon. And then, um, sorry, I, I didn't catch the interviews part, uh, Michael, uh, that you were at, uh, I'm trying to essentially create like a mock uh, agenda here for ourselves. Was the idea to essentially have folks like ZB or somebody else also like we do like little interviews or? Well, I, th I don't think it was necessarily an interview, but I think, you know, Wes had said, had brought up the idea of rather than us relating the story, we try and reach out to the people who's like, they're the one who experienced, hey, I had to do a release or somebody just to spend like one or two minutes. We record, get asked them to record one or two minutes of them explaining, ex, you know, going over their experience. So this and we put those together. Okay. That and then, sense. you know, maybe, you know, if, if that's a good, if we can get enough of that and that's a good portion of the content, then like maybe you and Wes do some commentary between them. Like, okay, we've now heard from developers. Now let's hear from say the security pra practitioner whose job it is to figure out what to do, right? And Yeah, I think I, the word I had used was testimonials. Testimony, think, yeah. That said, I, I think it might end up being structured a little bit as, you know, when we do them with these folks as interviews, only because asking people to just go sure. talk pretty tough um so i think it'd be a lot better like like just setting up a quick you know right. 15 minute video chat and just record it and say hey I, i'll cut it you know up into segments um i'll be, and then maybe we'll you know let them know we'll send them the segment as soon as we have it to make sure that they are happy <laughs> and we didn't you know misrepresent their their thing I, I, I have a couple folks internally who have done this style of presentation. I can reach out to them and, and ask them for some advice on if they have any learnings. They, they, we've been doing this series of interviewing different teams across Netflix, and they've been presenting it in almost this exact format. So I totally did not come up with this idea on my own. I very clearly stole it from, from these folks. So um, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll reach out to them and see if there's a good way that they found to sort of structure those that get the most value at, at the lowest you know, time investment. And then I can, you know, post some feedback. Um, that said, we do need to do pretty aggressive um, scheduling here. So if we can all spend, you know, reach out to these folks over the next day or two, um, and then we can, you know, get things scheduled. Um, I'm happy to, and I, you know, I don't know how other folks feel, but I'm happy to just run, even if it's all of them. Um, you know, maybe, maybe if you are the point person who contacts them and says, hey, are, are, would you be interested in sharing your story? Like maybe, you know, we can do it together. Um, but, you know, in, in interest of saving folks, you know, the time. Um, I think even I'm, back to the other point is it'd probably be better to limit the interviewee, interviewers, right? Because otherwise we've got a lot more people involved versus, so yeah, if you're willing to do it, I think that would be better personally. Yeah, and I can and I can set up the record screen recording and stuff um, pretty easily. So, um, and then from once we have that, uh, we will need to do some edits. So I don't know, Darcy and I will probably have to get together and do some some co-recording um, as well. You know, I'm we can do that starting anytime right after this meeting. We, we, well, I think I have a back to back with this, but. Uh, 
you know, the next couple of days we can we can set up some time and see if we can get a good cut at you know the intro section and um, and that uh, and I think what else what else do we need to be able to deliver this video? I think I like your agenda here, Darcy. Is there anything else to add to? No, uh, just to confirm, we only have 30 minutes, right? So we're, <laughs> we're uh, 30 minutes, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I'm hoping not to do like a documentary here, yeah. Um, uh, we're going to need some Netflix streaming support if we go longer. Than that. <laughs> you know, we're going to have to figure out a way that people can binge watch this uh, these sessions. Um, so, uh, no, I, I think we're good, Wes. Uh, there's a number of action items that I've taken down here for, for ourselves, I think. Um, and it sounds like we can reach out to um, uh, some folks offline to, to take the next steps. And then hopefully, uh, like I said here, uh, I'm taking the A to um, submit as a pull request uh, this agenda so we can put that into some sort of docs folder inside the cloud space repo. Um, so folks can give uh, feedback async on that. Um, just in case they think that we should add different topics. Um, and then, yeah, the, I think uh, if we queue up the blog post and you're willing to help um, source some of those case studies or testimonials that will help add uh, content to this. And then, uh, yeah, I think we're looking pretty good. Yeah, and back, back to Netflix style, you can think about this as episode one. Um, we'd love to have, you know, any other time throughout the year. We've been, we brought back a JavaScript trends panel um, from Montreal and just did sort of the standalone and it was really one of our top five videos for the month. So um, would love to think about at least a quarterly thing with y'all. Um, so video style blog supported. Okay. The other thing I think that's key is that we actually have the time for the meetings or at least the next meeting set up so you can like in the talk say, and if we've just gotten you really interested this is the time you can show up for the next, because it's yeah, good to point them to the repo, final, but the face-to-face -face, I think is sometimes the hook. I totally agree. Uh, and I think that was our last agenda item for yep. this meeting too. So uh, I noticed that the folks who voted, uh, it looks to be that it was like, this was probably like the latest viable time in the day, right? So we, we should probably shoot for a bit earlier um, than this. So this is, was two to three for me central time. Uh, so I, I think we should shoot for something in the morning and preferably something that doesn't conflict with the uh, existing OpenJS or Node calendar since a lot of folks are, are uh, on many different groups there. Um, are we, do we like Tuesday? Cause it seemed like pretty much everybody was comfortable with Tuesday. Tuesday is better for me. Um, it used to be no meeting Tuesday here in GitHub. It's no longer that way, but um, <laughs> I, I, it hasn't got full up for myself. So I can do Tuesday uh, and rearrange my schedule if I have to. So um, I'll let the folks, especially the folks that are here um, uh, later, the European time zones are definitely tougher, I think, for, for ZB and Dom. Um, so uh, if we can do it in the morning, I think that's, that's easier for those folks. I could be wrong, but... I'm oh, Pacific uh, Coast, but I could start early. I don't want to speak for all Pacific Coast people, but I wake up quite early. So, yeah, that's uh, that's for, the thing. Like this, twelve Eastern is like nine Pacific, right? That one, but that that actually is a pretty busy time already on Tuesdays. How's eight AM Pacific? Anyone do school drop off? I guess school's not back. Well, maybe it's back. Turning on iPads at 8 a.m. <laughs> the new norm. turning on iPads at 8 a.m. is the new norm for schools. I think at least it is for my little nephew. So. I can see like Wednesdays at noon Eastern. Sorry, is I don't see other community meetings. Although I don't know how that works for everybody else. So. I think, so the only thing there for me is that that back-to-backs with the NPM RFC call, um, 
which obviously Darcy goes to <laughs> uh, as he runs it. And I, and I try to generally attend. I mean, what if we, if we shot for that same time? So you said, uh, oh no, one, that's right after the TSC meeting. Is that the no TSC? Uh, not, no. Uh, the TSC meeting rotates to th three different times, but it doesn't, I was just looking for gaps, like where I look across the, the weeks, um, you know, Monday, Tuesdays and Wednesdays in, in that 12 o'clock slot, there are, uh, are meetings that take place, but like Wednesday seems to be, Wednesday at 12 just seemed to be an empty slot where there aren't any regular meetings at all. So if we wanted something in the middle like that, that was at least open. I can only do a half hour on Wednesday at that time. So we should so we should try to shoot for Tuesday then. I I, I think Tuesday seemed pretty good and, and everybody who voted pretty much had at least a couple of available Tuesday slots. So I mean if it, yeah. if we how, I guess what is our cadence? Have we decided on that? I, I don't think we need weekly. So I think if we uh, as long as we don't overlap, like the standards working group is on Tuesday and the CPC meeting is Tuesday and then it's the working session, the alternate. But if we just make sure we choose the alternate week from those, then there wouldn't be any conflicts. Yeah. Right? Well, I have a, well, I may, I have, that's when I have my LF executive director meeting. <laughs> that's where it gets tough. Yeah, unless again, you're all West, you're West. Coast, right? I'm central now. Um, um, but again, if you all are up for an 8 a.m. Pacific. I, I think earlier is the better, right? Dom and, and ZB, I think, are our two main um, European folks. Does, does oh, the earlier I, I'm not good at representing the European folks because for me, uh, 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. is the best time slot because uh, uh, my kid's already in bed and I, I can do whatever. Yep. So anytime after, I think, yeah, after 11 a.m. Pacific on these days, because that's when we have a lot of our existing calls. Okay, I'll take the action item. We're over time. I'll take the action yeah. item to open up another issue with a couple of options on Tuesday. Uh, and we'll, uh, I'll, I'll put it up for a vote, but I'm, I'm guessing we don't want any more than, and then every two weeks, but I think we should probably shoot for every month to start because I think there's gonna be a bunch of things where we just don't have quick progress. Um, anyway, like I said, I'll, I'll leave it up to a vote for everybody uh, and I'll take that action item. And I think that's the end. So uh, I don't know, Darcy, do you have any closing thoughts? No, thanks for running uh, with us, Wes. Um, if we keep up that, um, I'll, I'll <laughs> I, already, I already handle one or two calls. So it's it's great that you're running this and, and taking charge. I can always just help with notes. So, yeah. Cool. Well, thanks everybody. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll keep in touch over GitHub and um, we'll get this stuff scheduled and, and start knocking out uh, the action items from this. So awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. Bye.